Well, Apple is expected to announce the new 2021 iPad Pros at an event on the 23rd of March. So we're gonna chat about what we can expect from the new tablets. And I've been using the iPad Pro as my only computer for professional work for a month. What? <laughs> Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Roland K. Smith. If this is your first time here, I am a social media manager and digital content producer. If you could like this video and subscribe to my channel, that'd help me out a whole bunch. Now I've had the one terabyte 11 inch iPad Pro with cellular connectivity since it was released in 2018. Now this is the A10X model with the single camera. I didn't upgrade uh, in, in 2020 when they released the last one with the LiDAR sensor and the, the new processor and all that sort of stuff because this one was running just fine. and while that new stuff was really good, it didn't seem like that much of an upgrade. I mean, these things are expensive. I think I paid about $2,200 for it when I bought it, which is about the same that I just paid for my new M1 MacBook Air, which is crazy expensive. Anyway, nearly three years later, and this thing is still going strong. In fact, I used it as my only computer for a whole month in December of 2020 while I waited for Apple to ship me the new M1 MacBook Air. And I used it for creative work, I used it for client work. Now, granted it was Christmas time and I had just had a baby, so I didn't have a lot of clients, but I did have a few and yeah, I did all my work on this thing. So was it a bold move or a stupid move? Well, we'll find out, but that's how I wanna take a look at the iPad Pro today. Uh, through that lens, like, can this be your only computer if you do creative professional work? Now, if you don't want to watch the rest of this video, here's your answer. Yes. But. But, 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 but. So firstly, you need to know what I do for work. As I said at the top, I'm a social media manager and digital content creator. So that means that I'm taking photos and editing photos, shooting video, editing video, creating graphics for social media, writing social media strategies, running Facebook ads, all that sort of stuff. So going into my iPad Pro only month, I had convinced myself that the only reason that I needed Mac OS was to run Final Cut Pro and that all the other apps I needed would be available in some form from the App Store or I could do it in the iPad OS Safari browser. And to an extent, that is true. So I downloaded LumaFusion from the App Store and jumped straight into my editing. Now, if you're not familiar with LumaFusion, it is an iOS app that is about as close as you're gonna get to a fully fledged editor on the iPad. It's capable of processing 4K video with multiple videos and audio tracks. It offers transitions, texts, LUTs, overlays, green screen, plenty more. And it's only gonna set you back a one-time payment of 30 bucks. I sound like a salesman, <laughs> link below. Now I had played around with LumaFusion in the past, so I was pretty familiar with the app and I had established a workflow. But even when I was doing really simple videos, I'm still just much, much faster in Final Cut Pro. And this is for two reasons. Firstly, the touch interface. Even with the pencil or the pointer, it's just less precise for cutting frames and requires a bit more finessing than the cursor on the laptop. And then there's the small size of the iPad screen itself. So while LumaFusion does a great job of allowing you to do all these sort of different edits, it's actually jumping into different screens for it. So you can kind of lose your flow and it just takes a bit more time to get to those screens, do those little edits you need to, and then get back to the timeline. And there are fewer plugins available for LumaFusion as well. So as an example, if I wanted to correct some audio, what I'd have to do is export it out of LumaFusion into another app, fix the audio, export it again, import it into LumaFusion and then get on with my work. And that's not something that I'd have to do in Final Cut. Performance wise, the A10X and the iPad Pro and LumaFusion have absolutely no issues. You can scrub through the timeline of 4K footage just fine. It exports really, really quickly. And that is not something that I can say for every laptop out there. It's something I can say though for the M1 MacBook Air. Check out my review of it up here. I do really like LumaFusion though. I think it's a fantastic editor for iPad. And if you're interested in video editing, but you perhaps don't have the money to fork out for Final Cut Pro, you don't want to subscribe to Adobe Premiere Pro, then this is a really good option for you to get stuck into it. 30 bucks. Okay, so that's my video editing sorted. Doable, but not ideal. So what about the rest? I've talked about the mobile versions of Lightroom and Canva in a previous video, and what I've said there stands here. Lightroom is a brilliant photo editing app, and for graphic design, Canva is very, very good. So that was how I managed all of my content creation for the month. Like I said, I didn't have heaps to do, a couple of videos and some graphics and a few photos, and I could do it all on the iPad. There were a few headaches, I wasn't as fast, but performance-wise, and I think um, quality-wise, very little difference. So what about the rest of the stuff? What about the social media stuff? Writing on the iPad using the keyboard is a nice experience. The keys aren't as nice as Apple's new MacBooks or any of the Surface line of products, but they feel nice and they have good travel. Though keep in mind I am using the older keyboard, the Smartfolio keyboard, not the new Magic keyboard that Apple has released 
um, last year with their iPad Pros, but I have used that and that's even better. So writing documents on the iPad is really no trouble. I, I wrote a bunch of pitch documents and strategy documents in that month and between the keyboard and the plethora of writing apps that are available, I had no issues. My writing apps of choice are Bear, the Notes app and Ulysses, but then I also use Microsoft Word and Google Docs. And my experience of these apps is that on the iPad, they're all almost just as good as they are on the desktop. I do like the portability of the iPad Pro when I'm writing. Moving from room to room or table to couch is a breeze and a change of scenery allows me to keep those creative juices flowing. But while I'm easily able to change my position while I'm using the iPad Pro, changing between apps or multitasking is a real pain in the ass. If you're just working off one or two apps, then the swipey swipey feature it works fine and you can bring up two apps on the same screen and you can work off them both. So if you're using like Google Docs and Safari, you'll be fine. But if you want to use any more than two apps, that's when it becomes really difficult. And if you are working off more than two apps, then that swipey swipey feature becomes a bit annoying because you don't know if your apps are to the left or if they're to the right. And then that floating sort of third uh, iPhone size screen is not particularly intuitive and I don't think it's very well executed either so that's sort of a little bit pointless. It really makes me miss the floating windows of Mac OS or Windows and while this doesn't mean that I can't get my work done it means I'm pulling my hair out while I'm doing it. And then there was one thing that I just couldn't do on the iPad and that was Facebook ads. They just they just wouldn't work. The Facebook business manager on the browser wouldn't let me scroll properly which meant that I couldn't see all my metrics properly and the ads manager app which does let me see all of that information is only available in portrait orientation which means that I can't use the keyboard while I'm using the app. Now granted this is probably a Facebook issue more than it is an iPad issue but it just meant that I wasn't able to run any Facebook ads in the month of December. Now fortunately I didn't have any running so that wasn't an issue but I wouldn't be able to use the iPad Pro as my only computer if, if running Facebook ads was a big part of my job and unfortunately for me it is. Now, file management on the iPad has always been a bit of a contentious issue. I don't mind it as much as other people mind it. I think that it could be clearer. I think that it's not always obvious where exactly your file is being saved. Is it being saved locally? Is it being saved in the cloud? Is it being saved in a third party app? I find it a bit confusing. I think that it could be done better. But generally, I'm able to navigate my way around it. I'm able to find the files that I need and I'm able to use them, which is the main thing. I'm really happy that I can plug in a drive now. The USB-C external hard drive that I use plugs straight into my iPad Pro and I can navigate through the Files app. That's really handy. But I have to admit that most of my files these days are saved in the cloud somewhere. Canva saves my graphics. Lightroom saves my photos. Bear and Notes save my writing. Docs saves my writing as well. So as long as I have a way to manage my raw footage, which I do through the external drives, then I'm a happy chappy. Now everybody's going to be different, um, but this works for me. The other main task of my iPad Pro during my desktop hiatus was of course video calling. We're doing a lot more zooms these days, so I use it for zooms. Now the good thing is that the iPad Pro has a better front-facing camera than most Apple laptops, but the bad news is the positioning of it. It's sort of, if you're, if you're sort of like on the side here, the camera is over here. So you, you're, you're looking at it like this, but you're sort of like lopped center. Now that doesn't bother me so much as the user making the call, but it bothers me knowing that the person on the other end of the call is getting this sort of off center image of me. So my month of iPad Pro only was a frustrating one, but ultimately it was a successful one. I might not have been able to work as quickly as I would have liked to have worked or in my preferred way, but I got there. Now had it been a busier time of year and I had multiple tight deadlines weighing on my shoulders, this might have been a different story. But for the month of December, a quiet month, I was able to knock out what I had to knock out. The iPad Pro is an impressive tool and while its size and the software do limit it somewhat, it's pretty incredible what this three-year-old little machine can accomplish, especially if you're willing to put up with a few headaches. So how can the 2021 iPad Pro improve on what we already have? Well, the rumors are suggesting that we can expect a very similar design, but with a few welcome tweaks. Now this is already a great looking device. So the suggested smaller bezels and that bit of extra screen real estate will be much appreciated. In fact, the screen itself may receive an upgrade to mini LED. So we'll see blacker blacks and more contrast. And we can also expect that generational performance bump somewhere apparently in the vicinity of the M1 MacBook performance, which is just on an iPad, crazy. Now all of this is welcome but expected news and after my month of iPad Pro only use, here's what I'd like to see in the upgrade. I would like to see floating windows. I would like to be able to open up windows and move them around wherever I wanted to move them around. I don't know how Apple is going to execute this, that's entirely up to them, I'm sure they could do it well, but I just think for multitasking, if we're going to take the iPad Pro seriously as a computer, the multitasking just needs to be 
vastly improved. I'd also like to see the arrival of more professional apps to the iPad. I think it's time that uh, Final Cut Pro and Logic come to the party. I know that they probably wouldn't be as fully featured as their desktop versions, but I think it'd be a start. And then finally, I'd love to see something done about the camera placement. Um, I don't know, can we see two cameras, one in each orientation? Like, is that too much to ask? It's probably too much to ask. Now haters are gonna say, Roland, if you want all of that stuff, just buy a MacBook. And I say to those haters, ¿Por qué no los dos? <laughs> okay, that's it for this video. Until the next one, keep doing what you're doing.